So hello, my name is Rob and this is Cow Rabbit Scale Model Studios and in this video we're going to be painting up the nice guys of the Imperium, Salamanders. This is my first time painting up one of these guys and I've got to tell you I really like how these look. This is a really easy method to do, great for batch painting, while on its own maybe not the quickest, it is pretty easy to do. Now. For this, I am going to be using the upgrade sprue, and I've told you all off about this before. Use your upgrade sprues, otherwise they'll sit there collecting dust. And I know this from experience, so I am going to be using the upgrade sprue. That's how I got this pose. As always, I'll leave any information or the paint shoes in the description below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. While this video is going to focus on the iconic green power armor, I am going to show you how to paint up all the other bits at the end of the video. Now, without further ado, let's gallop along. So the first thing we're going to need is an intercessor body, and I'm going to use some of the upgrade sprue parts. It doesn't matter what body you use, uh, but obviously some of them are posed ever so slightly differently, so I would encourage you to experiment. Now, I've already used the sconces for another project, However, in this video, I'm going to use this little hammery thing here. I'm going to use the power hammer and the gun arm. I'm also going to use the helmetless head and then the shoulder pads, mainly this one here with the cool chain and hammery bits around it. So these are my bits unclipped, nice and easy. And now I'm going to put them together. So sub-assembly wise, this is how I'm going to work. I've glued all the arms on. Yours might differ slightly, but I can work around this, which is quite easy to do. Normally I wouldn't glue the arms on, but for the sake of the video, it's just a bit easier to show everyone what I'm doing. Now, I have kept the little dangly thing, the backpack, the shoulder pad, and the head separate. But the head I will mount onto a little bit of sprue, just so it makes it a little bit easier to prime and also paint. Now, when it comes to priming the miniature, I'm actually going to be using the Colorforge Death Rattle Green. These are fantastic sprays that give a real lovely smooth finish. However, they have recently released a Salamanders Green, which you can see on screen now. Um, if you are doing Salamanders, I would probably strongly recommend you get this step as it will eliminate the first couple of steps that I need to do. And if you are painting an army, it's going to save you so much time. So I would really invest in that. So the head was primed with Colorforge Raven Black and everything else has been coated with Death Rattle Green. I've also decided not to use the little dangly hammers off of his belt as there are a set on the edge of his shoulder pad, which will work just as well. The other thing I am going to do is I'm going to mount him on a base just so I can put him on a hobby handle as I find it a little bit easier to work with one of those. Now, the first color we are going to use is Warpstone Glow. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice big chunky dry brush. I'm going to make sure my paint is ever so slightly watered down. And then what I'm effectively going to do is put my brush in my paint and I'm almost going to buff the color on. If you haven't got the Salamander Green Spray from Colorforge, this is unfortunately something you will just have to do. Um, try and make sure your paint is thinned down, take your time and build it up to a nice solid color. Here you can see we've got that lovely solid green, which is pretty iconic of the salamanders. And it took me a couple of coats to get to this stage. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ruin our work with Agrax Urshade. Now, what I like to do, um, as I'm not so much of a fan of recess shading, I think it's quite boring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slather the whole model in Agrax Urshade. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh no, what have I done? I've ruined it. And it might certainly look like that, but all we're going to do here is make sure that we've got it into all the recesses that we want to and the model is just completely covered. As you can see, looks awful, quite worrying. However, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to a dry brush and we're going to almost buff on Warpstone Glow. And what we're trying to do is get the shade to leave in the corners where it would have naturally settled anyway, but we're going to buff those armor panels to a nice solid finish. This is where the time consuming part of this method comes in. However, if you're not a fan of recess shading and things like that, this is a really good cheating method to do this, as what we're actually going to do is work our way up to a nice solid color. And here my brush is ever so slightly damp still. We can work to those nice, clean, smooth armor panels, which is really what you want when painting Space Marines. However, if you're not going for that, then by all means, <laughs> go rough and ready. And here we are. As you can see, 
we've kept all that detail. We've got a nice smooth finish and all our you know, edges are recess shaded. This is a really good way of cheating, especially if you hate recess shading. Now, the next thing we are gonna do is I'm gonna use matte black from the Army Painter, and this is for all the sections of the undersuit. Do just take your time with this step, as the neater you are, the less you have to tidy up, the quicker the method is. However, I will say, don't worry if you do splodge. I did a couple of times, it's not the end of the world, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that now. So the undersuit is now done. Now, if you did make any mistakes or you did just want to tidy anything up, all you need to do, get some warpstone glow. And this is why we did this step here, is that we can just paint a little bit of warpstone glow back over and neaten up any rough edges. And here you can see, that's how we are. Now, if edge highlighting isn't your thing, you could stop here and you've got yourself a really good solid looking power armor. However, if you do want to, I'm gonna come in with some moot green and what I'm actually going to do is focus this on all of the edges. I'm going to go a bit ham with this one, as I'm only going to paint one of these guys, so why not go all out? But effectively, all I'm doing is I'm going to use the edge of my brush, and I'm just going to work my way around the miniature, just getting a nice, sharp highlight. The only thing I will say is if you are going to batch paint using this method, the more highlights you do, the more you're going to have to replicate that on all the miniatures. So, you know, sometimes it, it's a little bit better to be a bit more selective and you can always go back to the miniature once it's finished. Here you can see all our highlights are done and it's looking great. Now, if you did want to push things a little bit further, what you can do is get some Uriel yellow and mix it with a moot green in a one to one ratio and just focus it on some of those higher edges. Things like the top of his collar, his knee pads, just any sharp little bits of detail just to make him stand out. I actually just put a few of these in and I think, you know, he's looking really, really cool. And that's really all the power armor complete. That's that's it. Um, an easy method to do, not the quickest, but it is easy with a lot of shortcuts and gives a great effect. And here is our salamander completed. Now, I am gonna talk you through how I painted these other bits. It's not a lot of colors. I actually didn't use a lot of paint at all for this miniature. Um, really, really like how we turned out. Actually, really like this scheme. But the Aquila was Retributor Armor with a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. Then the Hand Flamer and the Power Hammer was painted with, once again, Army Painter Matte Black and dry brushed with Lead Belcher. The top of the gun is Brass Scorpion and the little canister was just touched in with a bit of Mephiston Red. Then the handle of his hammer was Screamer Pink with a little highlight of Pink Horror, along with Retributor Armor on his little dangly things. And finally, the shoulder pads were once again matte black and the icons themselves were Corax White. Now I'm gonna talk about the face as these guys have a really iconic look to their faces. And it's something that I really wanted to replicate and kind of try and find a method for doing. So what I did was once again, matte black paint, then I gave it a dry brush of Eshing Grey, followed by a fairly lighter dry brush of Mechanica Standard Grey, and then a very gentle tickle of Dawnstone. And then finally, what I did was I just mixed a little bit of Dawnstone with Corax White to make a really pale, and I just accentuated some of those features, things like his cheekbones and the ridges of the noses. Finally, from Nocturne, I wanted his eyes to look like they were glowing. I dotted in a bit of Corax White. Then any other little details were just silver, with just lead belcher with a wash of known oil. And that's it. This guy was really, really easy to do. Um, it took me an evening's worth of work, so it was probably a couple of hours while I watched a movie, but the more you do, the quicker you'll get. And here you can see the completed salamander. Once again, I really like this armor. It's nice and bright. It's nice to paint a bright marine. Uh, with a bit more something, I guess, than the usual Dark Angels that I've been obsessed with lately. And obviously I put in his, some of his transfers and things like that. And I'm really pleased with how we turned out. And here he is a little bit closer. Really enjoyed painting this one. Obviously stay tuned for a lot of these. A lot of people have Leviathan in their hands now, but maybe aren't sure how to paint their Space Marines. So do stay tuned as I am going to be covering quite a few chapters with really easy methods. So do keep your eye out for that. I'll also be doing some basing tutorials to uh, 
help along as well. But that's it from me. Once again, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care.